the sea level rise. I want you to watch this small video from AGU fall meeting. Here, so we know when the annuals are. And these are markers, volcanic markers, that we use to cross-state the course. So we're not matching the isotopic records up in this case. We're using the volcanic markers and then counting years in between to line these three records up. And you can see that across a fairly large area, this is deuterium excess, um, the, the, there's a, a very systematic excess shift and a lot of common variants throughout this system. So there's very large signal that's going on here. In this case, we think it's the retreat of sea ice. And now we know that this is a matter of one to two years. So in a matter of one to two years, there was a very large change in what happened out over the ocean. As I said, the only thing we can think of that happens that fast is a change in the uh, sea ice extents. And that's happening, and it's not just a question of human lifetimes, it's not just a question of decades. It's, as I tell my students now, it's less time than it takes to get through college. Um, the other point I noted here was that, so it's not just uh, deuterium excess, but uh, I noted that the deuterium, which is a proxy for temperature, changed in about a human lifetime. Well, this is not my best slide for this, I apologize, but we now have, uh, again, with the uh, matching up the, the, the volcanic events, we can now show that um, what we thought was a human lifetime is probably made up of two events. So there was a warming, a plateau for about 30 years, 40 years, and then a warming again probably made up of two events. So there was a warming, a plateau for about 30 years, 40 years, and then a warming again. Such that out of that 10 degrees of warming, it was about one degree per year for five years. Then it plateaued for about 40 years. And then it went up about one degree per year for another five years. So a very different view is emerging now. These abrupt events actually have abrupt events lurking with inside them. This is beginning, I think, to give us the ability to understand what really controls these things. But I would point out to you that one degree per year for five years is 100 times faster than the current warning. We've had about a degree, maybe a little bit more than a degree, over the last 100 years. And we've noticed that. Imagine something that was even 100 times faster than that. This would be very clearly, one degree per year would be something you would absolutely notice. And it's happened many times in Earth's history. Uh, and it gets even worse. Um, we've now, when, when we first pulled out the, the North Grip ice core, we noticed that this is the bowling warming now, which is about 14,000 years ago. Um, showing a, a, another very large warming, about 10 to 15 degrees C. This in the North Grip ice core was about one year, one to two years in, in the ice topic record. We underplayed it, we talked about it, and then I believe it's, it might even be mentioned in the North Grip paper, but we didn't stress it because again we were going, how can this possibly be? It wasn't until we got the Neem ice core, which shows the same thing, and again these cores are matched up not by matching up the jump, but by matching up uh, by independently dating these things. Uh, but we now know that in northern Greenland, this is not true for southern Greenland, but in northern Greenland, there must have been some threshold in which the, the atmospheric circulation got to some point and then bam, it changed. Such that you got about a 10 degree change in mean annual temperature in northern Greenland happening in about one to two years. And we now have replicated that in two ice cores. That's a thousand times faster than the current warming. So this is clearly something that would get all of our attention. I would point out that uh, abrupt change is not just something that ha occurred in the past. Um, this is, as we were writing the report and as we were talking about the report in public, uh, something that as a scientist I didn't really think about and didn't really consider and didn't really appreciate, to be quite honest, is the fact that abrupt change is happening now. That if we were to go 200 years out in the future and look into the record of today, we would see abrupt change. And that's, those abrupt changes would be just as... The Tuvalu Islands, the Marshall Islands, are on the verge of submerging. And Bangladesh is at very high risk. And India is at very high risk because of the flood of refugees from Bangladesh due to sea level rise. And we are also sure that all the sea ice will melt. Everything is already in the pipeline. So it is just a matter of time. All the glaciers and ice caps are going to melt. The only thing scientists continue to still debate is the rate at which this happens. And as we move further, 
we have been seeing that the dates have been pushed closer and closer. Earlier it was estimated that 2100 could be the date by which we could see zero sea ice in the Arctic. But then recent estimates have shown it would be much much closer. In fact in 2012 the US Naval School gave us an estimate. That was 2016 plus or minus 3 years when you will see an ice free Arctic. And there is so much more science that has been discovered and everything points in a dire direction. There is no earlier about the cliff failure, hydro fracture and when you put up all these things into the models then the melt is getting accelerated. And this is a small representation of how our world will get reshaped because of sea level rise.